Hey everyone, it's Bree! It's me! <laughs> um, so I have a lot to cover, um, so I'm just gonna jump in, um, with a slight, you know, intro. Um, yeah! So I don't know if I'm back back, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I do know that I've always loved filming my most disappointed and my favorite reads of the year. Um, and so I thought the first video I should post, um, coming back should be uh, my favorites first, and then my disappointed will come up later. Um, but yeah, so I had a baby. Uh, like, I found out I was pregnant a couple months before we had to all quarantine, and we were quarantining since then. I also am now in my dream job. I'm a librarian for adult programs and services and adult collecting. Um, so literally living the dream. Um, it's been really fantastic. Um, I hope that quarantine for everyone and everything has been I hope you have not been ill afflicted um but yeah um I am currently having a great time and yeah <laughs> um so let's jump in I've been reading 2021 was the first time I read over 100 books in fact I read 104 books and that is thank you to the Louise Penny series which I binge read in quarantine um it was a great time <laughs> so um i think i read yeah i guess i read the whole thing that year um it's you guys i kept a list of my favorites and disappointments but i have not looked at the list since then so this feels like a lifetime ago honestly um and also um i don't have the energy or time to put all the books up on the screen and to hold them up <laughs> um for my 2022 video which i do you want to do favorites and disappointments at the end of the year? Um, I will have books. I will take the time to show an image of the book, but for 2021, we are just winging it. Um, these are in order of when I read them, and we are just going to zoom because there's a lot of books I loved in 2021. And I also, that means I also don't have the ratings for them, so sorry. Um, I'm just going to try to get a vibe, get a vibe for, cast my mind back to how I might have felt then. Um, so hope that's okay. But yeah, let's get going. So the first book I loved was Cup of Gold by John Steinbeck. Now, I have read East of Eden by John Steinbeck. Loved it. Um, I read it only a couple years ago. It was five stars for me. Cup of Gold, I think I gave three and a half, three point eight. 3.8. But I really, really enjoyed it. It's an older classic of his. Uh, it's an, um, I mean, all of his stuff is considered like classics. But you know what I mean? It's one that's not as much read that I've heard people talk about. And it's really, really, really good. It's this guy who believes he's, it's set a long time ago. I can't even remember. There's like a guy that I think is supposed to be Merlin. Um, and this gentleman has dreamed of sailing out and claiming victory. And everyone, he's hearing about all these people claiming lands and bloodshed. And he dreams about it. And it's like, be careful what you wish for. And it was really good. I thought it was very insightful to be writing about that. Be careful what you wish for, like, at the time. Um, especially when people who were conquering other lands were seen as, you know, such, like, goals. Um, so, really good. Then, um, I read The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. This was four stars. This was so good. She wrote, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, and I cannot remember if I read that or not. Um, so, so good. Like, it plays on gender and romance, and I couldn't even really tell you what it's about. Um, it follows one half, um, a character who, um, occasionally dresses like a man, um, and then there's another character who is a man who is so in love with Napoleon and, uh, follows him, like, goes to join his camp. And this, and, and like, it, this doesn't even cover everything, though. And one of the things that fascinates me about Napoleon isn't even really his history, but the fact that everyone was in love with him. This was a leader and person that people were in love with, I mean, in love with and lay down their lives just to get a glimpse of him, and it was really interesting following that train of thought. Um, next book was Bunny by Mona Wood. This was a newer book at the time. Very weird, this girl goes to a new school, you know how it is, dark academia, there's this group of girls that people don't hang with, she gets in, she finds out what they're doing, and literally, I did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. Spoiler alert, sacrifice bunnies to turn into ideal boys? I don't know. Very weird, but I ended up liking it. The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Um, devastating. This is my first Colson Whitehead. Um, it, he was inspired by this book based on the true story of schools that, um, I know, um, uh, native boys in Canada were sent to these kind of schools, black boys 
and the US which sent to these kind of schools and other minorities as well and these like strict um, schools because they're seen as a troublemaker they get in trouble for something that's not their fault as is the case and they were really really harsh and usually boys would end up dying there um, and I know both in the US and in Canada and I'm sure elsewhere um, but I only know prominently of it in these two places where they would find graves later of these boys and this story follows a young man who gets sent there and it just broke my heart. I read In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Love this book. This um, takes a look at an abuse relationship between two women. Um, uh, one was the abuser but um, it was so it's significant for a multitude of reasons. Um, it takes multiple formats. Um, I read it on my Kindle. Like each chapter like kind of does its own thing which is really cool. Um, and it was really insightful and something she mentions in the book is that queer abusive relationships are only looked at because when you're a minority you have to present a perfect front. So, um, so at the time, um, learning about, um, relationships that were abusive, where to go for resources and stuff in a queer relationship, she didn't have any sources to turn to. Um, the whole entire Inspector Armand Gamache series by Louise Penny. I've talked about this. Well, actually, I don't know if those videos are still up, sorry. <laughs> but obsessed. Like, obsessed with this mystery series. I was reading a book, like, every one and a half, two days. It was so good. I would, and I, I would finish one immediately by the next one on my Kindle and start on them. They are so good. If you're looking for a mystery series that has heart, that doesn't have a detective who's cheating on his wife, that isn't an unhappy marriage, if you want characters that you'll be following and falling in love with, if you want really nuanced looks at human nature, and if you also want really compelling and interesting mysteries um jump in the series so um i would say you know first one's fine second one the mysteries you're like okay but four is where she hits the stride but i was hooked from book one hooked from book one i'm i'm still reeling with how amazing these books are um everyone in this room will someday be dead by emily o. austin um oh by the way i only gave two out of like the 16 i read in the louise petty series three stars everything else was a five star or a four star um Emily uh, Austin, this lesbian, um, needs a job. I'm casting my mind back and she, this was also a newer book at the time, she takes a job at a church <laughs> and it's a church that is not accepting of queer people and she gets an email from someone who's emailing the person whose job she took over for and she writes back pretending to be her and it's very, it really touched me. Um, I left my homework in the Hamptons. What I Learned Teaching the Children of the 1% by Blythe Grossberg. Um, this was a really interesting read, but it's also really touched on some idea that confuses me, which is why a good majority of the 1% are so hard on their kids. Because in my mind, you want your kids to have, to learn lessons, to learn to work hard, but you want them to have an easier life than you had. And you have so much money, why are you not making their life easier? Instead of stressing these poor kids out and like they're on drugs and stressed and unhappy, like, but it was really interesting. Um, the Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This was a short story collection. The first story did not impress me. Um, every other story in this collection, including the title story, blew my mind. Um, the author is black and this was about being a black female, the black female experience and all these tales that she told and it really just, it really just hit her. Um, Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I cracked open um, her newest one, Hello Beautiful World, and I didn't get far enough, but I definitely want to read it because for some reason, everything about Sally Rooney's characters are not things that would normally compel me or interest me, but I'm interested. And I, I liked them. Like, I couldn't believe I liked normal people. It had everything that I should not like, and I liked it. Um, Olympus, Texas by Stacey Swan. This was also a new story, a new book at the time. Um, fun Dysfunctional Family. So good. That's all I need to know. The Antidote for Everything by Kimberly Martin. Um, they, the hospital where the main character and her friend work at have been told that they need to stop agreeing to, um, was it, uh, was it help queer, it was like to help queer patients or help, like they weren't allowed to anymore, including like I think just anything, any services. And the ramifications of that, but this also went in a direction that I didn't think I would like. And I loved it. And a lot of it was about friendship between um, this uh, doctor and her, doc her friend and there's even like a slight bit of romance not between them and I still like like it it was good it was good I want to read more about this author it was a great piece of uh, contemporary literature 
the operator by Gretchen Berg. This takes place, I don't remember in what year, but not too too far ago in the 1900s when operators were still a thing. And this lady overhears something that she shouldn't. Um, and then also, like, sh and, sh and the ramifications of that, and she's just this, like, lady fretting, you know, what the town think, like, da-da-da-da, and there's also something about her family, and it was just a great, uh, ride. It's a little bit longer than I thought it needed to be, but still only about, like, 300-something pages. It was good. Um, oh, I read, um, The Dry by Jane Harper. And I'm trying to think, yeah, so I read multiple things by Jane Harper. I immediately read all four of her books. Um, I do know that two of them, one of them was The Dry, which is an Ellen Fox, which is a series of the same character. And I read The Lost Man, which is a solo. I'm like, I immediately started read all four of her books. Um, I read The Lost Man, oh, I thought I read The Lost Man first, but I guess not. Um, blew my mind. If you were looking for a solo mystery and you were sick of mediocre mysteries, you need to read The Lost Man by Jane Harper. Um, she's amazing. She blew my mind. Her newest one I wasn't as impressed with. Um, the Lost Man is still my favorite of her four, um, two are in a series. And then apparently she's only doing one more in the series. I don't know. Or maybe that was a different author. Sorry guys. <laughs> uh, a lot of book news since I've last posted. Um, but yeah. So, so good. She, she is top tier. The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. This took me by surprise. This was phenomenal. This was a complex modern mystery where the mother-in-law may seem whatever, but they were complexities. This wasn't like some rom-com movie. Like this was, uh, the mother dies under suspicious circumstances and all of her kids, including um, one of the kids wives had a reason to be unhappy with her. But then you get the mother's story and, like, and I still was, didn't quite agree with her reasoning on things, but getting her side of things, it just felt so, and then it just goes deeper and it was really good. It was really good, guys. Um, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. So good. So good. Um, you start, it's like a mystery and it's split up. So you start, you get perspectives. So you get, there's like five big chunks where you get different perspectives going from the past to the future. Then you go in reverse of the order of perspectives um, and, and the same time, like the same time period. So it's like five time periods this way, five this way, and it gets futuristic and it gets prehistoric. And I was blown away. I was blown away by this book. I need to read more um, David Mitchell because this blew my mind. Um, Hidden Valley Road, Inside the Mind of an American Family by Robert Kolker. This family had like eight children and like six of them ended up being schizophrenic. And while the history, nature versus nurture of, um, of history of schizophrenia, things like that, and it just, ugh, my heart felt for these kids. Um, uh, I can't remember if the parents were like awful or not, but um, the Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah, Delilah Harris. I know you guys have heard of this one. I really loved how important hair played a role in this um, modern day contemporary lit horror um, because black women's hair is like, is us. Like, it's us. It's such a huge part of our identity and who we are and who people perceive us to be and what they think of us based off of our hair. I really, I really loved that. Overall, it's not like... That's why it stood out to me, and I love that it stood out to me. Um, which also now it's gonna be like a TV show or movie or something. That's new news. Um, but other than that, it didn't really, in terms of like, it wouldn't be the first thing that come to my, comes to my mind to recommend. Um, it would be a very more niche recommendation for me. Um, the Pisces by Melissa Broder. Um, this girl gets broken up with, she goes um, to stay at her sister's in this coastal town, and this merman fish crawls out of the ocean and they start sleeping together, which I was like, I, I'm not one that's in that. Like when, when that water movie came out, I did not care, I did not see it, I no interest. But this went in place I didn't expect and the main character is very, very unlikable. And I loved it. I loved it. I need to read other stuff by her. Um, she's great. Uh, Gone for Good by Joanna Schaffhausen. Book one in a mystery series. Book two is out soon. I have an arc of it that I need to read, but it might be out soon. Um, also, yeah, now that I'm a librarian, I get arcs. Okay, digital arcs, but I don't care because I love reading on my Kindle. Um, but yeah, it's pretty nice. 
<laughs> and then um this was she's a detective mystery series she has an ex from when she was a teen um then her boyhood um first love comes back into the picture and i was thinking here we go here we go but I love the way it was handled. These two were not like beating each other up, fighting over the woman. Like they had their own identities. They they stayed out of her way. Like it 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 was just it was so good. Like it was good. I like that. And I was actually rooting for her ex husband, not the childhood friend that came back, because he left and then she felt lost and then she met this guy, and they got married early. Whatever. I was rooting for her ex. I'm rooting for her ex husband. I haven't read book two yet, but that's good. Um. Lakewood by Megan Giddings. Um, this is um, her, uh, a black woman and a uh, young lady and her mom are struggling so she obviously opposed this experiment series or to take part in just like trials and weird stuff happens and you follow her thinking and it's really good. It, it um, I wouldn't say at this point it's super original but I liked it and I think that it has something to say even if it's not an original thought to say. I listened to it as well and I think that's the way you should do it. Um, Dissolution by CJ Sampson. I have now read that entire series. I'm absolutely obsessed. Um, in book one, um, there's this hunchback, uh, I don't know if that's the right term, but that's what he calls himself. Um, or that's uh, the language. Um, he's a lawyer though, or a barista, and um, he Thomas Cromwell asks him to solve a case or something and so but I've read all up to seven books or whatever now and I think he's still writing them or going to I'm obsessed I am obsessed this is like the best uh uh historical fiction mystery series I've ever read in my entire life and I'm obsessed like I'm learning so much it follows through the turmoils with religion and factions and whatever but not in a way that makes you feel dumb it explains it so well but also not in a self but not in a like let's spend a hundred pages describing where we are at right now. It does it through the conflict, through the mystery, through the murders. So good. So good. Um, the Wicked King by Kay Ankrum. Ankrum. Uh, a black woman wrote this? Ooh, ooh, when I got to the end and flipped and saw the author page, I was like, yes. So this is a teen book, actually. And um, these two boys, really close friends, and one of them starts seeing things. And the other is like, I can't abandon him. I'm going to play along with his quest that he's on. And one of them, and that um, guy doesn't live a great home life and it's queer I don't want to spoil it but it's queer and I thought it was beautiful because I feel like queer stories everyone kind of thinks nowadays well a lot of people that aren't queer think nowadays that being queer is like what's so difficult about it you know like it's 2022 and that's not the case especially if you are still a teenager but the way that it went and the explanation for everything because this is not fantasy was fantastic uh, hyperbole and a half, unfortunate situations, flawed coping mechanisms, mayhem, and other things that happened by Ali Broche. This is a um, graphic novel series, and I read this one and her follow up, um, which I remember reading snippets of it when she still had a blog from the first one and like crying laughing at some of her stories. It's just the second one's much darker. She's been through some tough stuff, and she definitely delves into that more in the second one. But it's it's really funny stories from her childhood. I do feel like at some point it went way too on and on about things that weren't relevant but like I think it was supposed to show her like kind of spiraling in various ways but I was like okay like I get it like let's move on especially because it's a graphic novel and sometimes the text is tiny and you're like you kind of get lost in the physical book instead of in the story but really good. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mosh Moshfeg. Obsessed. This girl's like I'm tired of the world I just need a break hires someone to bring her food, grabs all these pills to keep her sedated, locks up her thing, and I knew what was going to happen to a friend at the end just because I knew the year that the, you know, what year it is when the thing starts. And she's also an awful person. So she's a horrible person. So horrible main character vibes. Love it. It was so good. And I thought it was going to be really annoying stream of consciousness as she's like, but it's not. It's prose it's like as it's happening and it's so good um i already talked about the lost man by jane harper that's my favorite mystery of hers chernobyl prayer a chronicle of the future i read a lot of chernobyl books over the last two years Ugh. Ugh. and if you haven't watched the miniseries so good um 
uh, Midnight in Chernobyl, The Untold Story of the World's Greatest Nuclear Disaster by Adam Higginbotham. This was such a thick nonfiction and I read it on my Kindle like that. It obsessed and very, very easy to read. And I will say, I know the miniseries is fictionalized, but I will say that seeing the miniseries helped me visualize what was happening um, and following these steps um, in the book as it happened. The Collected Schizophrenias, Schizophrenia's Essays by Esme Wei Yu Wang. So good. So, so good about schizophrenia. Um, the Luminaries by Eleanor Cadden. So this list is not in order, by the way, because I think that's the first book I read in 2021. Um, sitting outside, you know, on the porch, just started quarantine. Um, and that is really good. Um, I think that was going on in booktube a while years back. And um, it takes place in a random, like, seafaring town a long time ago. And there's a mystery. There's, it's a murder mystery and you deal with all these characters it is very very slow and some people might not think the payoff is worth it but i was so immersed in the book i loved it i read only a little bit every day but i was really happy i read it empire of pain the secret history of the sackler dynasty by patrick Redden keith amazing nonfiction book um about the like opioid crisis um and oxycontin and how this family knew that they were being evil and kept going and how they got away with it the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Um, so I read the second book in the series about uh, these seven-year-old people who solve crimes and they all have fascinating backgrounds. I read the third book in the series a couple weeks ago because I got a digital arc of it and it's just as good. I want to be these people when I'm in their 70s. It's very real, it's funny, and it's fun. Uh, the Wilk M by Tana French. I have ranted about how I don't like Tana French and I said that because I tried to read the first two books in the series and I thought the premise in this, I thought the first one, okay. Spoiler alert, the first one in her series is Goes Unsolved, which pisses me off, but then I saw, okay, it's good, let me continue. And it follows someone new in, e in the Dublin Motor Squad. It follows a new person in each in each um, book. thought that was cool. The second one, the premise, the likeness, is the dumbest premise I've ever heard, and I cannot believe people just take it in. So I would say that I, I used to say I don't like her. I read The Welch Helm, though, which is a standalone, and she does great literary mysteries. Great character development, character insight, like fascinated so I loved the Welch Elm and I want to read her other standalones I but I'm not dipping back into the Dublin Murder Squad series because that was ridiculous um The House in the Cerulean Sea that was a nice comfort read during quarantine um but it kind of felt like a children's book to be honest uh Good Talk A Memoir and Conversations by Mary Jacob um this is a graphic novel and she's married to a white man and she talks about her identity growing up and how to talk to her mixed child and talks about very real situations. Also, like she's dated women and men, and she just seems like a really awesome person. And it was really good. And then the last one on my list is A Burning by Mega Majum Dar. This was new at the time, and this is about this is so big. So um, this is about someone I cannot remember what country, but they're struggling. They live in a slum essentially, and um, but they have hopes. They have hopes and dreams and they believe that, that things can be better. They just need to follow this and follow that and unfortunately it doesn't go that way. And there's some really um, wonderful characters in the book and yeah. Whew, okay, um, my camera is turning red. So I did end up having to uh, record another clip because um, I didn't want to rush, guys. Um, again, I hope you guys have been well. I, I don't know what I would say was my favorite. I was just so happy that this was such a good reading year for me. I've read 50 books this year, so in order to catch up, I need to read 54 more of last year, but I'm not worried about the number. Um, but it's like I know I can do it, you know? Um, so let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were, or, you know, if you didn't like any of these. You know, I always love hearing both. Um, but yeah, and again, I have no idea what I'm doing with this channel, but I did want to record these videos because I love having a video visual wrap up and hearing what you guys loved and didn't love um so yeah uh i hope you guys are all hanging in there and i will see you in the next video bye